Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Terry, I got a fun episode for you guys this Friday and one that you've been requesting, I do for sure. We're going to be taking a look at the Gun for IR project, putting it through its paces, testing it out, and seeing what it can do. And big thanks to JB, the creator of this project, for sending this to me straight from Japan. He wanted me to test it and see what I thought, and I figured why not do a video. It was not requested of me, but I know you guys want to see it, and I definitely want to talk about it. Because when it comes to light gun support on modern LCD televisions, Gun for IR is 100% the gold standard as far as I am concerned. I've been playing around with this thing a ton, and if it can play point blank, including the challenge stages, like real arcade hardware, it definitely wins in my heart. Now taking a look at the project in and of itself, this is just one type of Namco gun con. You can build a gun for IR in pretty much any shell that has the space for it. This is a DIY project and JB does sell some of these prefab, but right now it seems to be he's out of stock but it might be coming back in soon. But from the buttons on the gun con to this modified trigger with a new micro switch, something I did in a mod video years ago. This is still the most comfortable light gun in my opinion. The weight of it, the overall hand feel, the button placement, the trigger pull, this to me is the light gun of choice whether you're playing on a CRT television or if you're using gun for IR. And You can make this project in anything you want, but trust me, the original gun con is definitely going to do it for you. And it's all down to hand feel and hold. This way in my hand, the way it pivots on your wrist, the trigger actuation, this is just what I grew up using. And when I play a light gun game, I want to use a Namco Gun Con. Now up front you're going to see that there is a lens on this. And that is because it's using a form of a camera to see IR sensors and we'll get into that in just a moment. There are different lenses you can use depending on how far or how close you are to your television, but this red wide angle here seemed to see all of the sensors perfectly fine in all of my tests. I did this on a 70 inch 4K Samsung TV and the lens that you're watching this on, very similar to the lenses in front of this camera, just a wider field of view. And this is where half of the magic happens with the gun for IR system, but it comes down to the other half being these four IR LED arrays. They are super nice, they're super low profile, and if your wife is nice like mine is, they will let you stick them to the sides of your television. You'll see there even is these custom 3D printed gun for IR brackets now, which would definitely clean up the project a ton. This is something that now is feeling closer to a retail product and less of a homespun DIY. And once you actually go into the gun for IR software, you're going to have a test screen set up, and that's going to give you four indicators on the four cardinal directions of your screen. This is where you want to put the sensors. Put them here, you're going to get some sticky pads and you're just going to pop them right on the side. Make sure they're lined up and make sure when you push them down, they are facing forward. Don't have those LEDs at much of an angle. You're going to have a lot better performance from there. And this is all it takes to get the sensor set up on your television. And the nice thing is with double sided Velcro, you can take the sensors off when you're not using them and just have a couple of pads. But as long as you get those four sensors in the four right spots, you're going to be halfway good to go. Now with this bundle of cables here, you're going to see it just connects over USB to any sort of USB power source. I used an iPhone adapter wall wart and they have these quick disconnects as well so you can definitely extend the cord but all of the cabling I got was plenty for a 70 inch LCD television. If we take a look at the other end here there is one USB A port and then a barrel jack for a power supply for an internal solenoid system. This would give you recoil just like it would in the arcades but you do need to have a second supply. But if you actually take a look at the software, it is all encompassing. There are more settings here than you could possibly know what to do with. And if you guys want a more comprehensive guide to gun for IR, leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll make that in the future. This is just an overview video of what the device can do. But from inputs and outputs, you're able to reconfigure the gun to whatever you want. Button wise, whether you want off screen reload, if you want a shot in the corner reload, a button reload, this is giving you the ultimate freedom to set up every single game however you want. Now do be aware, depending Depending on what sort of emulator you're using, some of these settings are going to work better or work worse depending on what the emulator expects of you. I've tried this with MAME, I've tried this with DuckStation, I've tried this with Demule and other Dreamcast and Naomi emulators, and pretty much there is going to be a different setting for each one. And there doesn't seem to be that much information online as far as how to set them up the best, so maybe it is something I'll do in the future. And if you do have recoil enabled on the gun you purchase or the one you pick, you're going to be able to go through all of the recoil timings there as well. But now that we have the gun for IR plugged into a computer, you're going to see in the top left hand corner all four of those IR sensors. As I tilt the gun left and right, it's going to go ahead and skew that image. You'll see when one gets obscured, it's going to disappear from the screen. 
to go ahead and calibrate the gun the first time you're going to need all four of the sensors within the field of view but the nice thing is once you calibrate this once it's going to be the last time you really need to calibrate it for that screen setup and this is similar to the gun con 3 that came out for playstation 3 except it is much more accurate and much more reliable and does not require constant recalibration that's the number one thing i've taken away from the gun for ir project so far is that i calibrated it once for my living room and it has been rock solid steady in the calibration department ever since i did that you're definitely going to want to calibrate it in game if you're doing arcade games or console games you always want to calibrate secondarily within the game and of itself but where the gun con 3 had these two ir sensor bases the gun for ir has four and that makes such a big difference in the overall tracking accuracy the response time of this i believe is around two milliseconds it is not going to have any lag whatsoever that a human being can perceive go ahead and calibrate the four points and then you can pop into whatever emulator you want and start setting it up for there for a duck station you're going to put a gun con on controller port one and then you can configure the fire the fire off screen the side a and b buttons however you would like but honestly the gun has a side a a side b and a trigger so you just want to bind them as you would normally would with a gun con for playstation one and anytime you load up a game at least on the namco side you're going to get a secondary calibration screen this is the direct capture and i'm also going to show you the camera shot from my living room this is what it looks like in direct and you can see how close that crosshair truly is in game and within duck station now normally i would never leave the crosshairs in duck station on but as a visual aid for this example you can see it's moving around and as i take the gun for ir off of the camera screen so i can actually get a center line shot you'll see here as i move everything around those are dead on the money accurate unless my camera obscures the actual gun for ir and as we actually move into something like point blank here i am playing directly behind the camera this is as good as using a gun con on a crt except i get a much bigger experience i keep a 20 inch pvm in my collection so i can play light gun games but honestly now with gun for ir i think i'm just going to default at least on the emulation side to my living room television because i've gone through so many different modern light gun solutions and while they all work relatively effectively there's always been something that keeps bringing me back to the original hardware on my pvms but here with gun for ir for the first time i really do feel like i have a replacement if i don't want to use my pvm and that is just so exciting now the one thing this does not do and hopefully one day it could is work on actual real arcade hardware i would love to take all of my light gun arcade pcbs and actually play them in my living room with something like gun for ir so if there's any wish i have for 2024 is that that sort of compatibility comes across but the accuracy is just absolutely insane. You need to hit center mass on this target to get 460 points or more. Point Blank is always my test for new light gun technology. It does require very good accuracy and looking at the camera and shooting at the same time with a gun for IR, I was able to easily pass that quota. If it can do that in Point Blank, and you'll see here in the direct capture what it looks like, it is as good as it can possibly be to me. This is my test. It's the one that I always use and it definitely passed with flying colors. But you'll see here in the gun for IR menu, we're going to have a default content mode as full screen or content aspect ratio. You will have to switch back and forth depending on what emulator you're using. I found for point blank and for PlayStation 1, full screen seemed to give me better aiming because it's always going to be a variable. But I tested this across so many different platforms and I've been having so much fun for it. And honestly, Naomi has been where it's really been for me. Something like Lupin the Third, the shooting, one of my favorite Lycan games of all time that no one really ever seems to talk about was even more fun to play here than it ever has been before outside of seeing an arcade cabinet or something like Confidential Mission available on Dreamcast or Naomi as well. This is another awesome light gun game and playing with Gun for IR, I felt like I was standing in front of an arcade cabinet or using my 20 inch PVM with my Dreamcast hooked up to it and that's all I ever really want. I don't want to think about the actual light gun controller. I want to pull the trigger, I want to play the game and I want to have performance that makes me forget that I'm actually using technology and it feels like I'm just playing the original. Something like Point Blank here, again, it just feels so absolutely incredible on the gun for IR. I stop focusing on what I'm actually trying to do and start focusing on playing the game. And if you see the crosshair get weird there, it's just because the camera was in the way. But honestly, this has just been an absolute amazing thing to test out. I'm so happy that JB sent one over for me to check out. And if you want to see more videos on it, do tell me down below what you'd be interested in. But I've got a lot of plans for this thing in my gaming collection. I'm going to pretty much have every single single emulation option available that I can play a light gun game on because it is my favorite arcade genre of all time and I've been definitely waiting to try something like this out and I will say 
I'm absolutely blown away by its performance. And honestly, the fact that once you calibrate it once and get it working with a particular emulator, it just works every single time is spectacular. It takes a minute to set up, but it is so good it's worth the effort. If you want to see more videos, just tell me down below. Bye-bye.